Welcome to another episode of the Mike Prince Show. It's Football Friday. Of course, our social media handles for Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter are all at the Mike Prince Show. The YouTube channel is Open Mic Broadcast Network. Our website is obnradio.com. On Demand Message Center, 720-721-1558. And our 24-hour message line, 713-570-6736. And without any further delay, we're going to jump right into today's episode. As we mentioned, it is Football Friday, and it has been a lot going on. Not only with the APR rankings that have come out, it's just been a crazy week, an absolute crazy week. We'll tell you about that a little bit later on. Meanwhile, we heard about the Prairie View A&M University situation when it comes to the APR. We're going to break down the rest of the football APRs for the Southwestern Athletic Conference. We'll discuss a little bit more about the entire scenario. But first, we want to get a Southland report from our correspondent, Rob Butler. If you had not heard, Stephen F. Austin been hit extremely hard. 82 ball players played that was ineligible between the years 2013 and 2019. But we'll hear from Rob Butler, and we'll come back a little bit on that. Right after this. This is Rob Butler with your Southland Report. Craig Haley, SCS football writer, recently tweeted that stakeholders across SCS college football say conferences are proceeding with plans for a 2020 season. Most preseason teams, polls, virtual media days, and unofficial starts are planned for July, provided the season starts on time. Contingency plans are a factor, so fingers crossed everywhere. The NCAA Division I Council has approved voluntary activities for athletes in football, men's basketball, and women's basketball beginning June 1st, sources tell ESPN. A decision on other sports should be coming soon. Now, the big news this week is that four SDS programs are ineligible for the 2020 postseason as a result of NCAA academic progress rate penalties. Two of the four are in the Southland Conference. McNeese is ineligible in football. SFA is eligible in baseball, football, and men's basketball. SFA's Level 1 sanctions include the vacation of three men's basketball Southland Conference championships, as well as the team's 2016 NCAA tournament win. Now, it's interesting to note that despite the academic challenges SFA football faced by landing in APR penalties, Coach Kobe Carthel has raised the bar in the classroom really quickly in building this program. The SFA football team had a 2.06 GPA when Carthor and his staff took over the program. This past semester, 61 players had a 3.0 GPA or better. 10 had a perfect 4.0 GPA, and the team GPA was 3.11. Former Sam Houston State quarterback Jeremiah Briscoe had nine 400-yard passing games during the last decade, which tied for third among FCS players. And finally, Cody Odron, the son of LSU head coach Ed Odron, just finished up his fourth year overall and his third year of eligibility playing quarterback at McNeese State. And while he has eligibility remaining at McNeese, over the weekend, Cody graduated academically from the school. In 2019, Cody led the Cowboys offense as a starting quarterback, completing 58% of his passes for 2,628 yards and 24 touchdowns. Now, he'll be expected to be the starting quarterback for the Cowboys in 2020 as well, but congrats to Cody on graduating from McNeese. That's Rob Butler, Open Mic Broadcast Network. And we do thank Rob Butler for giving us that report on the Southland Conference. You heard about McNeese and Stephen F. Austin, but of course, the big one is Stephen F. Austin. And as we've been talking about throughout the entire week, it's one of those situations where Everyone is going to play their role in how the program ended up where it was. Of course, there's going to always be a front runner, and all fingers are pointing toward the athletic director. It's part of the territory that comes with leadership. 
But hopefully Stephen F. Austin and McNeese will get things on the right track just as we're pulling for Prairie View. Prairie View, of course, a member of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. And we're now going to go through the APR reports for the 2018-19 grading period of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. We want to first start off with a congratulations to Jackson State. Jackson State led the entire conference with the highest APR ranking, and they led it with a 973. We'll just continue and go through the rest of the conference in no particular order. But we'll just want to make sure that we give everybody their props and recognition. University of Arkansas Pine Bluff, APR ranking of 949. Then have the Texas Southern Tigers, APR ranking of 950. The Southern University Jaguars, APR ranking of 952. Coming in at 938, Mississippi Valley, the Grambling State Tigers, coming in with an APR ranking of 937. On the reservation, all corn, APR ranking 963. Alabama State, APR ranking 942. And Alabama A&M's APR ranking comes in at 9. 24. Now, the threshold is 930. We're trying to get it to 950. So according to the 2018-19 APR rankings, the only two not to get across the Mendoza line would be Alabama A&M with the 924 and Prairie View A&M University with the 910. So those are your APR rankings for the 2018-19 grading period, which is, as we've been breaking down the entire week, always a year behind. Now, Alabama A&M is not on any levels or whatnot because of their waivers that you can go through. And as we've been explaining throughout the week, this APR is almost like a moving target. I say almost, it's not almost. It is a moving target. And there are a lot of complications and things that go into this system formulation. But it is what it is. It's what we have to deal with. And it's up to us to learn the ins and the outs of it to maneuver. Because I can assure you that there are other programs who are borderline and probably without understanding the insides, angles, and the tricks of the trade would probably be hitting below the mark. But that's how the game is played. We have to adjust and move on. And speaking of adjusting and moving on, wait till you hear what I have to share with you. I got to take a break. We'll be right back. I promise you, you will not believe me. I tell you this one. Serving the community through faith and athletics, the Open Mic Broadcast Network. I'd like to take this time to recognize our sponsors and supporters at the Open Mic Broadcast Network Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union, Temple of Refuge Ministries, Prairie View Athletic Club, Attorney Lee Van Richardson, Farmers Insurance of Hempstead, Texas. Diva Skin Conditioner, Helping Hands Lawn Service. Thank you for your support of our local and regional coverage of student athletics here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. It's the Open Mic Tele-Network Line. Dial 720-721-1558 and instantly at your fingertips you have the latest local news, weather, and sports. Need a word of encouragement? Dial 720-721-1558. 1558. The Open Mic Tele Network line features weekly prayer, verse of the week, and local ministries at your fingertips. Everything you need on demand. Dial 720 721 1558. 
24 hours a day, seven days a week. No internet, no problem. No Wi-Fi, no problem. No app, no problem. All you need to do is dial 720-721-1558 to listen now. And welcome back to the Mike Prince Show. Don't forget, we come to you each and every day, Monday through Friday, and of course, live on Sunday, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. We have the Carlos Brown Show coming to you 10 to 12 noon on Saturdays. She Say, She Say Sports, Fridays, release, and coming real soon, the barbershop, B.J. Jones. Don't forget our buddy from the Southland land. To Rob Butler with the Southland Report each and every week right here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. And of course, you know we do our thing over here. We stay on the grind and do what we know to be fair, honest reporting. And with that being said, when you understand this line of work, you do know from time to time people don't want you to get a hold to certain bits of information. In fact, They would rather disseminate the information according to their control, and that is understandable. However, from time to time, however the case may be, information circulates. And that's part of being a part of the media. Sometimes people give it out directly, sometimes it comes out indirectly, and it's not necessarily that someone tells you anything. Sometimes people will tell on themselves without even realizing that they're telling on themselves. I'll give you an example. We put out a tweet, and the tweet said this, Breaking news, Dr. Donald Reed, to be named. Athletic director at TVAMU. The key word is to be named. Did not say has been named. I did not say will be named. To be named is a speculation. When you listen to the show that we did, Speaking that very thing, it said that information and evidence is pointing toward the direction of Dr. Donald Reed to be named as athletic director. That is a report. And reports happen every day. But when you reach out to me and ask me, would I consider removing my post? Why would you want me to consider removing a post if it's not true? Why would you even be concerned what I'm posting if it's not true? There's an old saying that where there's smoke, there's fire. But we would rather... Share the information with other entities who do not cover you on a regular basis. And when they do share your information, the responses on their social media page talks about Prairie View A&M University like they're a dog. Verified for yourself. We try to uphold the integrity We try to uphold the namesake of not only Prairie View A&M University, but every HBCU program connected to this country. But you're concerned about what we're posting? You have launched a full investigation on an AD search? If you're going to put out an investigation over an AD search, what else are you trying to cover up and protect from the alumni base? An athletic director search? 
And if a person is that concerned about their names being on a list, why would they even apply for the job to begin with? Because in the business of athletics, if you have a go-getter, if you have a person that is a quote-unquote rising star, you don't think that the very institution that they're at would not be aware that this person's head would be on a swivel for the next opportunity? And if you have a person who does apply and does not want it to be known that they're applying, is that the sort of person that you want leading your program if they don't have the loyalty and the integrity of their current employer, you want to really consider bringing that? If that is the case, you will go through the channels of scrubbing an individual's telephone, of cross-referencing a person's phone number to see if it's lining up in any of your little sacred circles. You will social media troll an individual to see who they're talking with in chat rooms. When I do not talk in chat rooms, you verify that you're right, you don't. Is that what we've gotten behind over an athletic director's search? Where there's smoke, there's fire. Just something to think about. Something to really, really think about. Here comes that word again, transparency. We have to be very clear about our value proposition, both to our alumni, not simply because they are the, a, a core constituent to a fundraising effort, but because they are ongoing, lifelong stakeholders to our university. Well, I must exit stage left. Our time is far spent. Don't forget to join us over the weekend. Carlos Brown Show, 10 to 12 Central Standard Time, in the AM. And on Sunday night, live, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. I am the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. As always, you guys be blessed. We'll see you on the other side.